Amen. Right on time. Well, first of all, welcome everybody. Welcome every, everybody back to uh, uh, Friday night Bible study on the stream that we're doing. And um, I want to just again just just thank everybody just for staying staying in tune, not only with the live stream and not with the Bible study stream, but just also with the church stream. And uh, the Wednesday services and Sunday services, I know I, I, I talk to a lot of you guys and I know that you guys are, are there every week and and it just it just shows that you guys are just staying staying in the fight, you know, staying continuing to fight the good fight. Um, as I said before, you know, with the with the churches and everything being uh, uh, all live streamed, that it's a test for us. It's a test for the Christian, you know, to to stay strong and, and not give up because during this pandemic that we're going through. I'm sure there will be some that, that will fall away, but you got to stay strong, and, and I know a lot of you guys, you just continue just to push forward and, and just praise God for that, and uh, welcome everybody back, and uh, I just want to also just say, um, as pastor's been saying, you know, everybody's just still doing their offerings and their tithings, and, and it just goes to show us, everybody's just continuing to move forward and doing their offerings and tithings and continuing to support the kingdom of God, I mean, everybody's just there and just just in tune with God and nothing nothing's gonna keep us from uh, you know from moving forward in our walk with him no matter what happens around us it shows that everybody's still doing what they need to do amen and uh, I wanna uh, just just uh, I'm just I'm just kind of excited today I'm, I'm sure everybody everybody here seeing the news today and, and and what was said by Trump and you know I know a lot of people uh, have different opinions on Donald Trump, our president, and and you know me myself, I have my own opinions on him, and 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 um, you know I, I don't get into the whole political talk and president. I don't like to talk about all that stuff, but but I really liked what he said today, and I know a lot of us seen it today. What he said, and and as far as him addressing uh, the churches, and you know we see it. It's funny because I was just talking to somebody. Uh, uh, the other day at work, and I said, you know, everything's starting to open, open up again slowly, slowly. They're slowly opening this, then they're talking about opening uh, the restaurants and about opening the bars and about, and some states already opened the bars and uh, all these other places. And I'm like, man, but they're not talking about the churches yet. You know, they're they're, they're not talking about the date when they're going to open up the churches. And and today, Donald Trump he addressed that very matter, and and I really like the way he addressed the matter because he 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 kind of addressed it with a with a firmness, you know, and, and, and he said one thing that he said was, is you know that they're they're opening up things and they're opening up. Um, he said they call liquor stores and abortion clinics essential, and he said, but they're not including the churches as being essential, and it's not right. Those were his words, and he said, you know, we, we need to open them back up, and he said we need to open them today. We need to open them now. I want them open this weekend. By this weekend, he said. And he said, you know, uh, it's up to the governors, but if they have a problem, give me a call. And, 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 and it's probably, and he said, it's not going to change my mind. He goes, and if they don't want to, or the governors don't want to open the churches, then I'm going to override them. He said, because the churches need to be open. It's an essential. And I mean, I, I just, just hearing them say that, it, it just, man, praise God, you know, because I, I started to think, you know, at what point, where was he at in the White House or where was he at? At what point? Then it just hit him in the heart that, you know what, I need to address this matter. Things are opening up and they're already arranging how things are going to go, but, but I need to address the matter of the churches. And, and, and it just kind of showed me, like, man, you know, God God can touch everybody. God will move in, a, in, in everybody's life that, that um, God will not, God has no limits. And that actually it brings us to the title of the message that we're talking about tonight is, is the title is we serve a limitless God. And going back to what we were talking what I was talking about today, it's just it was a powerful thing. It was a powerful thing that he said and the way he addressed the matter that you know what the churches need to be they need to open up already. And of course there's gonna be probably some rules and, and things will be a little different. Maybe we're gonna be a little more spaced out and a little more um spaced out from one another as far as the social distancing and, and of course that has to be talked out and things like that. But I'm just excited that we're gonna we're gonna be getting back in the church. There, there's no exact date yet. I mean, we're gonna talk about all this and everything, but 
but just that 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 it's happening, that the wheels are in motion, it is it, just just a reason just to praise God, Amen. And going back to um, the title of tonight's lesson, which is we serve a limitless God, and we're going to be in the book of Psalms, chapter seventy-eight, verse forty through forty-three. That's Psalms seventy-eight, verse forty through forty-three, and that'll be the main text. Of tonight, of course, as always, we'll jump to some other scriptures and and I'll read from different parts of the Bible. But um, that'll be the main text for tonight. And if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up the Psalms, Psalm 78, 40 through 43. Uh, let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Father God. We come before you humbly this evening, Lord. We just thank you, Father God, for everything that you're doing in our lives, Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to open our eyes and wake up and get out of bed this morning, Father. That we have a, another day of blessing your name, another day of praising you, Father. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, that we that we can see, Lord God, that, that the churches, Lord, are going to be open soon. That we're going to be back there, Father God. And Lord, I just pray that when these churches open, when, when all the churches open, Father God, that Lord, just there's just an outpouring, Father God of your people and outpouring, Father God, of the hearts of the lost, of those that are in the darkness, Father, that come and seek you, Father, that realize the situation that took place that we were in, that we're still in, Father. I pray, Lord God, that you soften the hearts of these people, Lord God, that are lost and that they just come and they just come for the truth, Lord God. They come for you to seek you and find you, Father. Lord, I pray for everybody tonight that is listening to this Bible study message, Father God, that tonight, Lord God, you just, Father, open the hearts, Father, open the ears to hear your word, to be receiving to your word, Father, and I pray tonight, Lord God, that, Father, as this word come forth, that it is not a word of me, but it is your word, Father. I am merely just a mouthpiece and a, a tool and a vessel, Father, and I just pray tonight that you move and that your spirit, Lord God, just come upon the hearts of everybody, of all your people, Father. As we thank you, we give you the praise and the glory and the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So as we get into the lesson tonight, I think all of us know or we should know that we serve an all-powerful, all-capable, all-knowing God. And we know that there is no limits on what God can do. But many times, not only people that are not serving God or, or, or unsaved, but there's a lot of times that even us that are saved, us that are walking with Christ, at times we may tend to minimize God's unlimited power. Amen. And we'll talk a little bit about this. And uh, in the book of Psalms 78, 40 through 43, it says, how often they provoked him. And it's talking about here about a story that, of course, we talked about many times about the people of Israel coming out of Egypt, how they were led out of Egypt from their bondage and captivity, and they were headed towards the promised land. And in Psalms here, it tells us, it says, How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power. The day when he redeemed them from the enemy, when he worked his signs in Egypt, and his wonders in the field of Zohar. A lot of times, many of us in our walk, as we read our word and as we pray and talk to God, there's many times that we can be praying in our walk and we may minimize God. Maybe at times we may put him in a box. And what I'm talking about is, is at times that you know, we may be praying on something. Maybe we're praying for a, a good friend of ours for the salvation of somebody. We're praying for a family member. And maybe it's somebody in our, our family or in our, in, our, in, our, in our close circle or a friend. Maybe a distant friend. But maybe it's somebody that we know is far from God. Maybe it's somebody we know that, that even talks down on God. That maybe even curses God. Somebody that's just far from Him that says they'll never step foot in the church. And they have nothing to do with that. And we may start to think in our mind, this person will never be saved. This person will never be serving God. And we may, of course, still pray for them. And we may ask God, you know, just give them guidance, Lord. Just, just give them just a, a direction in their life. 
help this person, keep them safe, watch over them in the life that they're living. And we may st we may pray for these things, but in my in our mind we may think at times like, man, this guy will never be saved. He will never serve God. But that's the thing. Sometimes we may we may minimize God. And we need to always remember that no matter how a situation looks, we know that we serve a God that has no limits. And we need to continue to pray for His salvation. Lord, I pray that You save Him. I pray that You, that you soften His heart and that He does come to church. No matter how distant it may look, He's going to come to church. Father God, just I, I, I know that You're an almighty, all-powerful God. And I know that You have no limits. And I pray for His salvation. And I pray that He come into the church. And we don't need to remember to, to continue to pray for these things. Even, even family members or friends that are sick in the hospital. I mean, we've been there before. You may have been there before where people call upon you and, hey, can you come over here and pray? And, 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 and this person, they're on stage four of, of this disease and, and, and they're, they're already um, withering away and they lost weight and they can't even walk anymore. And they say that he has two or three days left. And we may go over there and we may say, you know, we may pray for them. Of course, we're going to pray and we say, God, you know, remove the pain from them. Remove the pain from his life. And, and, and we may even think in our mind, okay, he's done already. I mean, he's not eating no more. He's on life support or whatever. We may, you know, God just, just comfort him at this time and take away the pain and, and receive him. And we may pray for these things, but we may think in our mind, you know, he's, it's already a done deal for him. But that's the thing is that we're praying when we're praying for somebody, we need to con st still continue to pray. You know what? God just perform a miracle on them right now. Because God has no limits and God just may do that. We talked about the, the miraculous before and, and how God sometimes he, he performs miracles here, but he won't do it here. Not everybody's going to get a miracle, but you never know who is and who's not. That's God. That's God's decision. But we need to continue to pray for that person. You know what, God? I pray that, that, that he gets up right now. That a miracle come upon him. But of course, we always know it. if the person passes or something, it, it's all in God's will. But that's the thing is we need to, we, we can't limit God. We can't limit him on, oh, okay, this person, it's a done deal. Or, or this person, you know, they're, 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 you know, our family members in, in court and they got all this evidence against them and they're going to, wash him up. He's a done deal already. But no, we need to continue to pray, not only just, just to help him, but Lord, I pray that that Lord, just, just you just perform a miracle upon him right now. Upon this person's situation. No matter how big the mountain may look. No matter how the situation may look. We know that we serve a powerful God. And a God that has no limits. Amen. And a God that can do big things. And there may even be people looking at God from a certain perspective outside of, of, of walking with Christ. There's people that, that can say, you know what, well, the Bible says that, you know, you can move mountains with faith. If I close my eyes and pray right now that God, he moves this mountain and I open my eyes, will that mountain be moved? Somebody may call God out in that sense. If I pray right now and ask God to, to move the mountain, if the sun stays up another three hours. And, I, and, and it goes down at the regular time. See, God, God ain't going to do that. See, people put limits on God. But the Bible tells us that God is capable of these things. He has no limits. The Bible tells us that He left the sun up in the sky. But see, there's some people that, that you know, uh, well, if God does this, then maybe I'll believe Him. Then maybe I'll serve Him. They put God to the test. It's not a matter of praying and I know God can do it. Do it. They just want to put Him to the test. As it tells us in our scripture here, they, they tested God. And a lot of people may do that. Is God going to do that? Can God really move mountains? If you pray, is, is a mountain really going to be moved? Really, if you pray to move a mountain, is it really going to be moved? If you pray that, that, that the, night, the nighttime doesn't come, that it stays at daylight all the time, is that really going to happen? You're serving God. These are things that people that are not serving God may try to test God on. While you're a man of God, you go to church and you do this and that. So if you pray for that, since you go to church and, and you follow Christ, is that going to happen for you? But see, God answers prayers not in the way that we want them to be answered. It's His will. It's His will how He's going to answer that prayer. But we know that when we serve God, God hears the prayers 
of his holy people. And God will answer that prayer. See, somebody from looking from the outside may say, you know, see, you prayed for it, and, and you know, the night still came. Or, or the mountain didn't move. But see, they don't see it in the sense that we see it. See, because God may look at our life and say, you know what, I didn't physically move that mountain. But as you see, I moved mountains in your life. You had a big, big obstacle in front of you that you couldn't get over. And as you can see, I got you through it and I moved mountains for you. Yeah, I, 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 didn't keep, I didn't keep it daytime for two days for you to prove something. But I took you out of the darkness. I took you out of the darkness and you found the light. See, but a lot of times people just want to test God. They want to test Him while well, show me. But see, when we, when we serve God, we know that God has no limits. And He's capable of doing that. God is capable of physically moving a mountain if He wanted to. And just a breath of His. He can move Mount Baldy if He wanted to. But does God need to do that? Does He need to show people that? No, what God calls is God calls on people to have faith in Him. To trust in Him that He can do that. To trust in Him that He has no limits. That's what it's about because when we serve God and we have all our faith and all our trust in Him, we know that He can perform the miraculous, that He can do anything in our lives. As it, as it tells us in the scripture, yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited Him. And that's what a lot of people tend to do is they limit God. And it says here, they did not remember His power the day He redeemed them from the enemy. And there's a lot of people sometimes, like I said, even some of us that are serving God, we go through situations and we go through ordeals in our life and, and we throw our hands up and we get a little upset. Some people even with this quarantine are getting upset. I'm tired of it. I, I, I'm ready to just go and do this and do that and, and I can't take it. I'm, I'm frustrated. Some people may feel just 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 uh, stressed out. But remember as it says here, as it tells us in the scripture, remember his power. Remember the day that he took us from the enemy. And everybody has their testimony. Everybody has, has the things that they got removed from. I know my testimony, the things I got removed from, doing this, that, and, and I don't even need to get into the details of all that, but I know that God removed me from it. I know that His almighty power saved me, He saved my family, my marriage, because we serve a God that has no limits. Just like everybody else, I've heard many testimonies from, uh, from different people, strong testimonies, heroin addicts, uh, this and that, people robbing and and, and, and I'm still at an older age robbing people and doing all the, these, these crazy things still. But let us not forget how God removed us from the enemy. And a lot of times we, we, we say when we were out there in the world, we didn't go through so many trials and we didn't go through so many situations. But really what it was is because the enemy had us in, in his grasp. Of course, we still went through ups and downs in our life when we weren't serving God. But now that we're serving God, we say, man, we, we go through trials and we go through these things. It's because, see, the enemy doesn't have us in his grasp anymore. We follow Christ now. And the enemy will do anything that he can to pull us away from that. He will do anything he can to try to get us to go back into the world and go back into the enemy's plan. Amen. But we need to remember that when we... When we pray and ask God for, for these for things in our life and, 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 and pray without limits, we always need to remember that when we're serving God and, and, and the things that we do for the kingdom of God, always remember that we have to do our part. All of us always have to remember to do our part. The Bible doesn't say, okay, give your heart to Christ and sit back on the couch and, and like Pastor says, drink tea all day and just relax. No, Paul tells us in Ephesians, you need to put on the full armor of God. You need to put it on. I'm not going to, he doesn't say I'm going to drape you with it and just relax. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. No, you need to put on the armor of God and fight every day. We have to do our part. We have to know 
We have to believe and trust in God that He has no limits. But it takes us doing our part. We can't pray. Someone can't pray and ask, ask God, you know what? Uh, God, uh, bless me with a job. I pray that I find a job and they're not looking for one. They're sitting at home and, and, and now they're not picking up, uh, not saying resumes or don't even have a resume ready or, or going on interviews or anything like that. They just say, well, I'm waiting on God to bring me a job. We have to do our part as well. And when we talk about a God that has no limits, God has no limits in every area. area. We know that we serve a God of healing. And when we talk about healing, I, I, I know like I was mentioning before that, that you know, we, we've, uh, uh, I've went to the hospital and prayed for people. You may have went and prayed for people. You know, like we always say all the time, people always talk about, you know, oh, you're always going to church and you're always doing this and that. But then when, when, when things get rough, they call upon us, hey, can you come over here and pray for somebody? Can you come to the hospital? And we're not going to, and we, we don't say, you know what, oh, you wanted to say all this and that. No, I'm not going to go over there. No, we say, you know what, we'll, we'll be there. We'll be right there to pray for them. Because we don't have hearts like that. It's not about having a heart that, all right, you wanted to talk all this stuff about me always in church, now you want to call them? No. We forget about all that. You know what? Somebody needs prayer, we're going to go pray for them. We can't save them, but, if, but we can give somebody the word of God and we can lead them to Christ. That's what we do. That's who we are. We're, we're tools and vessels of God to be used by Him. And it's what we do, like I talked about last week in the Bible study, it's what we do. Like when they put, when I talked about last week, when they put uh, 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 John and, and Peter in jail, and they said, you guys can't be talking about Jesus like this. We're going to let you guys out, but we don't want you guys preaching the word. And they said, you know what, we're going to do it again. And they put him in prison again because they said, that's what we do. And last week when we talked about it, and why did they do it? What did they say? They said, because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. We know that God has no limits. We're going to go and we're going to pray for people in the name of Jesus. Peter told the guy to stand up in Jesus' name. Remember when we talked about it, that he didn't have gold or silver to give him, but he said, what I can give you is I can give you in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. Because he knew that God had no limits. Everybody, That's what everybody knew, that he walked with Jesus. We talked about that last week. Because we know that when it comes to healing, God has no limits. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 25 says, So you shall serve the Lord your God, and He will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. You know, when we pray for somebody in, in, in the hospital, when we go and, 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 like I said earlier, you know, maybe somebody that's, you know, they say, you know, it's a matter of hours. You know, and, 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 and we pray for them and we lay hands on them. And, and that's why it's always good that, that that we go and we talk to them about Jesus and the importance of Christ. Not just lead them to, to the Lord and, and, and repeat this prayer, but I always find that it, it's important that we tell them the importance of, of what Jesus did for us. How God sent His Son to sacrifice His Son for us so that we can be saved. That His blood was shed, that He was put on the cross for us and our sins. And that getting into heaven is about is about repenting and receiving Jesus in your heart. And see, you know, when, when people acknowledge that and understand it and they, and they want to accept Christ in their heart, I mean, they know they're on the verge of, of, of death there. And they, you know what? I want to receive Him. I'm sure you've maybe been in these situations. I know I've been in, the, in situations like this where people are, 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 are they're, they're going already. And they want Christ, and it's it's a something special. It's a special thing because I mean, people may be sad around that somebody's passing and and, and the situation that's taking place. But I'm thankful that God God had a purpose that He showed me the purpose that He had, why He called us, why He called us from the from the world to come and serve Him, to spread His gospel, to help others. And I've seen people accept Christ and, and, and receive Him as their Savior. And, 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 and they even say, man, I feel peace. I feel a peace upon me. And I've even said that has nothing to do with, with, with me being here, with, 
whoever being here, but it's the Holy Spirit that's upon you. And, and these people pass, and it's like, man, just the, the power of God. And it just shows me, man, God has no limits. You know, whatever this person did in their life, and whatever, all the things that they went through, the Bible tells us, you can be there at the edge. You can be there at the end. But when you repent and you receive Christ, when you trust in Him, when you give all your heart and your faith and your trust into Him, then God will forgive you. As He said, as He told the guy on the cross, you know, today you'll be with me in paradise. And, and when something like this happens, you, you just see the, the power of God. That there's no limitations and, it, and it's a special thing. I mean, like I said, some of you may may have been here, and a lot of times, some people, there's always some people that may some, say something negative, like, like, oh, well, well, if you were praying for him, you know, the person still passed away. The person's still gone. The person didn't didn't get well and come out of the hospital. So where was God at? People question. People say things like this. There's people that have that negative talk like that. See, that's why I don't go to church. See, you're you're always in church. You're a man of God, and you're praying, and nothing happened. But see, a lot of times people can't see certain things. We can't see certain things. See, this person accepted Christ in their life. And, this, and, and somebody may say, you know what, the person wasn't even healed, they passed. You know what, what they can't see is the person was healed. The person was healed. God did heal them. He didn't heal them in this, in this time, in this life. But as they accepted Christ... And the Holy Spirit just came upon them and they felt the presence of God. God took them home to the kingdom of heaven. There's no pain. There's no sadness. There's no sickness. But what some people can't see is God did heal them. And they're even more healed than if they would have been healed here on earth. Because with God, there's no limitations. But see, a lot of times, just like when somebody may say something like this, they're limiting God. Oh, well, he didn't get healed. No, he did get healed. She did get healed. That person is fully healed right now. Not here. But they are fully joy in the kingdom of heaven. But see, a lot of people just put God in a box because they can't see it. Because the person's not here with them no more. They put limitations on them. But we know that we serve a God that has no limits. Amen. Also, we serve a God, of course, that performs miracles. We know the Bible is full of miracles. The Bible tells us about different things that happen. But some people may even say that, you know, that the miracles were only done back in the biblical days. You know, all these things that we read about in the Bible. And nothing like that happens here today. I don't see that. Some people, that's what I'm saying. Some people limit God like that. Some people will limit God. And I've seen people that were serving God, that were going to church, and they stopped going. And, and it's like, why don't you go to church? And all oh, because, you know, this and that. And I realized things and, 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 and all this and that. And some people there got me upset. And some people got me mad. Were well, you going for the people? You put limitations on things. But see, that's what I'm saying is that when we serve God, there's, there's, it's, it's limitless. The book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, For I am the Lord and I do not change. Yes, God did a lot of miracles in the biblical times. But there's a lot of things God still does here. God still does a lot of miracles here. You ask any any. RN or any any doctor anybody that's been working in the medical field for a long time and been in surgeries been in the ER and been a thing they could tell you about some miracles the things that the doctors can't explain how it happened we don't know you know in my 10 years of 20 years of medicine I can't explain it because God can perform the miraculous and like I talked about a, a couple of weeks ago, that sometimes uh, the miracles in our life are, are miracles. They ain't big, amazing things, but they're miracles that are taking place in our life. I talked a couple of weeks about, about our mat being our miracle. 
But when Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk, that the mat that we carry is that mat that what we used to be and the things that, and, and now we carry that mat, it doesn't carry us. And now the mat is our miracle. Because the miracle is that we're no longer out there. We're no longer lost. We're no longer in the darkness, wandering in the dark. Because God has called us to the light. Amen. When we talk about God having no limits, we can think of a story. If you have your Bibles there, you can turn to 2 Kings chapter 4. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 4. What to turn Excuse me. parched. So in 2 Kings chapter 4, um, this is a familiar story that a lot of us know. I'm in New King James Version. It says this. It tells us here in 2 Kings 4 verse 1 through 7. It says, A certain woman of the, of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few, and when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it out into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her sons, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons will live on the, uh, live on the rest. We see here in this story that it, it kind of gives them an, an idea of, of, of not setting a limit. Because we see that God's going to supply a miraculous amount of oil for this widow. And we see that he tells her here, you know, go and get some more jars. Go and get, get some more jars and then whatever you have, go out and get some more. And, and he says, go out and get some from your neighbors. And, and, and go out and get more jars from the other people around here. And, and, and get more and more jars. And don't just get a couple of jars. Don't just get a few jars. Get a couple. Get more and more and more jars. Because I'm going to fill them with oil. And she went and got more and more out. And, uh, and the more jars that, that she got and the more oil that just kept coming out, the oil just kept pouring and pouring and pouring out. So as he tells us here, don't just get a couple. Don't just get a few. Just keep going and ask everybody. Borrow more jars and more jars. God's saying right here, don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. Okay, I only got a few. I got a couple. That's enough. No. Go and get more. Borrow more. Because when you limit yourself, you're going to limit your blessings. Because with God, there's no limits. And when a person limits themselves, they limit God. God had every jar filled and delivered this woman from poverty. And that's a good example right there on that story. That don't just don't just get what you think you can get. Don't limit yourself like that. Some of us today may need a miracle in our life today. And I ask that when we pray and we need something in our life, don't pray just for a little bit of help. I remember some time back, I don't know if you remember, but months back, we did a we did a, a, a message on, and the title was Pray Big. It was some time ago, and you may remember it. It was Pray Big, and it's not gonna, we we're talking about when you pray, don't set limits. Ask God for the miraculous, ask Him for the big. 
And I remember someone said, man, well, so I paid for $1,000, you know, I'm going to get $1,000? Well, maybe, I don't know. It's God's will. But don't set limits. Don't put God in a box. Amen. Because we, we know that we serve a God of provision. We know in the Bible, Jehovah Jireh, meaning the Lord will provide. We did a lesson some time back about the, the names of God. And we went over this Jehovah Jireh, a, a, a God that provides. Philippians chapter 4, 19 says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. I remember somebody a while back saying, you know, that uh, some time back they were going through a, a, a financial battle. They were going through a financial struggle. And, and, and they were saying, you know, that, you know, I'm going through this and that and, and I'm paying my bills and, and man, it's hard. You know, I can't I do a lot of things that, that I used to do and, and, and times are hard, but I'm still paying my offerings and my tithings. There's even been times that I, I remember them saying, there's times that I was like, man, I, I don't have the offering and time to give. But you know what, after the, you know, the, they, they say, man, you know what, I, but, but I, I just made a way and I gave, I gave. I gave what I kept giving. And they kept praying. They didn't give up on God. They didn't say, man, I'm going, it's already been months. It's going on almost a year now that I've been in this, in this situation I'm in. They kept coming to Bible study. They kept going to church. They kept doing this and that. They kept going and pushing forward and pushing forward. And now they got blessed. The money's coming in. The job's pretty good. Everything's flowing. And, and that's just it right now. We serve a God of provision. We serve a God that will pro provide. And just like, like, like it, 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 it says in, the, in our main text here, never forget His power. Never forget His power. And that's what this person did when they were going through the situation. They remember what they got removed from in their life and what God has already done from them. That's what, that's what kept the person going. Man, the power of God, I, I, I don't forget it. And that's what it's about. We don't forget, never forget the Egypt that we came from. Never forget that bondage and captivity that we came from in our life. Never forget how He took us out of that. Just like the people of Israel. We need to always remember His power. And when God starts pouring these blessings out upon us, when God starts uh, uh, financially blessing you or, or just blessing you in all these different ways, always remember His power and always remember God. I know a lot of us are getting now stimulus checks and we're, a lot of us are getting blessed financially and all these different things, but use wisdom discernment even though we, we have more money than, than we need at times and you know what but don't forget about God always remember don't let the don't not to let the money the money control you as it says in first Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierce themselves through the many sorrows. Sometimes a lot of money can do that to people. It can it can it can pull them away sometimes. It can drift away, but just always remember his power. Amen. And always remember God's protection. A lot of us pray for 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 God's protection. We all do. I pray every morning that God continues to provide that hedge of protection around my family, my home. Of course, our, our pastors, our ministry, our congregation. That God just meets the needs of His people. Especially right now, a lot of us with this health issue, we're praying for uh, health protection. We're praying that this virus doesn't come, come anywhere near us or our family. As we read a week or two ago in Psalms 91.7, a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come Year, year. No matter how how they make it seem on the news, oh this and that, this is happening. Remember that we serve a mighty God, a God of, of protection, a God of provision. And we can't limit him. We can't limit God. 
as it tells us in the scripture, it can't limit as they limited the Holy One of Israel. Because they didn't remember His power. You know, a lot of times when people, they put their limits on God. Some people may say, God can't do this. And God can't do that. When they limit God in their life, I've heard people say, man, God, God, I know that I've done, I've heard people say I've, I've done so much that God could have forgiven me. And I'm like, man, they're not understanding that God will forgive. When you open your heart, God will forgive. But don't limit Him like that. See, a lot of times when people limit God, then God may just set His limits with that person. But it's not that God said, you know what, I'm going to limit you to this, this or that. You're not going to be able to, I'm going I'm to limit you because I, I just, you know, God don't think like that. God's not, a, uh, we don't serve a God like that. But sometimes God may say, you know what, you're limited because you limited me. You limited yourself and you limited me from your life. And we need to always remember that when we pray, when we seek God, whatever we're doing in our life. When people say God can't help them, God can't do anything for them. Don't set limits on God. Because we serve a God that is almighty, all powerful. You know, I, I, I can't wait till we get back into church. I, I, I feel that it's coming just right around the corner already. With this thing that happened today with what the president said. And it's just like, man, you know, I, I'm just glad that God placed that in his heart. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it was a, a thought that came to him and if God brought somebody that talked to him about it or what, but it was a situation that he said, I got to say this to me. All these things that are opening up, all the things around us, but nobody had talked about the church yet. And just when I heard it, it was just like a, like a prayer being answered. Because the churches are essential. You know, the, 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 the state and the, and the country... They were limiting the churches. Right now we're limited to live stream. We can't go in, into the churches. But that doesn't mean that we're limiting God. Because God always still makes a way. Even though we're not in the churches, He still made a way. We're still communicating. The Word's still coming out. Amen. That concludes the lesson tonight, and I just want to thank everybody for joining in as, as we just close in prayer right now. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, just for your word, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, for your anointing and your breath upon us. And I pray, Lord God, for everybody out there, Lord God, that as we continue to seek you and pray in our lives, Father God, that, that all of us, including myself, Lord, that we just... Don't place you in a box, Lord God, that we don't minimize you because we know, Father God, that you are a limitless God. That you can do anything. You can you can move mountains. I mean, you prove what, what you can do just, uh, just on a single day, Father God, with this thing that took place. This pandemic that took place. It, you showed us how, how the whole world, Father God, just from one day to another can be shut down. That showed us right there that there's no limits to what you can do, Father. And I know that this was done for a reason. And I just pray, Father God, that, Lord, the scales fall off the people's eyes and they see why it was done, what is taking place. I pray when the doors open that people just flood the churches, Father God. Just flood the churches to seek you and to just find the truth, to know you. That they see, that they understand and realize that when it comes to you, there's no limits. That you, you just, Father, you're just all powerful and almighty. I pray that you continue to give us all strength, that you continue to bless us all and give us a hunger to continue to move forward for you and your word, Father. I pray that you bless everybody out there, the health, the homes, the families, the marriages. Meet the needs of your people, Father God. I know we all go through different things, Father, and I just pray, Lord God. I, I intercede for everybody right now that is listening to this, Lord God, 
stand in the gap, Lord God, and I pray, Lord God, that you just, Father God, that you touch them. That you breathe, bring us all a breath of freshness in our life. Father, I thank you, Lord, and I give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And again, guys, just stay tuned to see when's the, what's going to happen with this whole uh, opening of the churches and things like that. So um, we'll, we'll find out. We'll let you know. And I'll just continue for now just to um, uh, join the Sunday service. Pastor may touch on it a little bit on the situation. But I'll continue just to keep moving forward for God because it's coming already. We're going to be back in the churches. We're going to be back fellowshipping with the congregation and just continue to stay strong for God. Amen. Thank you. God bless. And good night.